Hola. Hello. Hello. Been a minute. Been a minute. I do. All right. The terminology been like a minute, a second, something like. I hate it, but I also have used it. Like, and but I feel like I cringe every time I say, "Be like, oh man, it's been a minute," and it's just like, ah, it's 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 like the GIF GIF thing. It's like I know that's okay to say, but I hate me for saying it. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. You know, I never heard "minute" till I went to Texas. I was like, "Is this a Texas thing?" But I guess it was all sweeping the nation all at once. Maybe, but I, mean, I feel like, like I feel like been Austin. I feel like Austin's the hub of like trends so like st- stuff i can imagine stuff starts in austin which i lived in greenville north carolina i don't believe things start in greenville north carolina um i think things go to die in greenville north carolina more than anything <laughs> um so one thing i did uh, the terminology down there is instead of like what are you guys doing later people would say what are y'all getting into that that was a thing mm. what are y'all getting into i like that yeah, what yeah, y'all it's, I mean, it's uh, yeah, exactly. Because you can't. It sounds weird if you don't have the accents. Like I can't go be like, "Hey, hey, gang, uh, what are you all getting into to later?" Like people would be like, "I don't understand," but it's like, "Hey, what's up, y'all? We y'all getting into?" Like it's like, "Oh, yeah. that does sound backcountry." Don't you say, "What's the haps, Jeff?" <laughs> Seems like something you'd say. Right? What's the haps? <laughs> hey, you guys, what's kicking going it? on? Huh? <laughs> yeah. What's the four one one? What it? What is the four one one? Let me know. Tell me about the four. Tell me about the nine one one too. The four one one, the nine one one, the eight one one, where your power lines and water lines are. You know that's important. Tell me that. <laughs> Mark it down on a map. Dude, I love it. Hey, what do you? Hey, I'm gonna come at you with a. Uh, I'm gonna call this a, a cold mm-hmm. open question. You know, you know how shows do a cold open, or you're not ready for anything. I pulled a a Yahoo answer. I'm going to ask you. All right. Um, And I want to know. Here it is. Here you go. If pork comes from pigs and beef comes from cows, then what comes from humans? Ooh. What are we going to call human meat? We don't name it, right? Like, we don't go cannibals and joy and then then use a – we say, like, human meat or human or flesh which is a is a, a cringe word man flesh flesh <laughs> is never rings. used in a positive manner like it's always no. said to be creepy it's either someone eating it or like something irritated but like n- you never say in a positive you never want to be using the term flesh mm-hmm. but if we as a society deem that okay we're going to start right. harvesting human meat like I could see it. There's a lot of people. I would say that like 50% of the people that are around us would agree to eating human meat if it was like prisoners or um, people that don't agree with them on a political spectrum. I think a lot of people would be willing to eat them just because okay. it'd be it'd be like so hot, you know, so hot but right now the, eating but the, political opponents. But the, it re- I mean, there's literally you can't say there's a better way to establish he, dominance. Ooh. Political opponents, P O ops, poops. You're eating poops. Wow, you're eating poops. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah. So Matt's best thing is 2023. Eating poops is yeah. a big thing in 2023. The year of so. eating poops. The year of eating poops. All right, makes sense. Go with it. I, why? Why? Why work with it? I mean, that's that's the thing's writing itself. It's it's that's all what right, it is. So. What a uh, what a writer's room we just had. <laughs> we just wrote the whole episode right there. Yeah, I starts, guess. Yeah, I, I assume this is how with like flesh SNL with poops. No. Yeah, this is how SNL works. I'm assuming. 
a lot to catch wow. up on. A lot. a lot. So I did survive New York City. Thank God. Because let me tell you, it was dangerous. I couldn't decide if I wanted a hot dog or a taco. Oh, my God. My life was wow. in my hands. Terrifying. It sounds <laughs> It was so scary. Horrible. I c- couldn't believe it. I was on the subway late at night, and I was like, wow, do I go get a drink here or there? My lo- Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. Thank God I got all those warnings from everybody's crazy uncles and grandparents about how dangerous right. it was going to be. Um, Did you fend off attackers? Uh, it was a great trip. <laughs> yeah, no. No, oh, oh, whoa, shit. Yeah, I and thank you, this. everybody. Have a great night. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's that, was it. that was it. Matt survived New York City. Good night, everybody. Oh, man. I wrote a lot of wow. notes about it. Um, okay. I kept a journal. Um, so I, I mean, I can review it a little bit. I also want to hear about your going to pro wrestling, because I know that happened since our that hiatus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, to the user... To the, to the end user, the listener, you don't know because it, it's it's a week no at a time. Hiatus. I don't know how. I don't know how we've yeah. done it. This is episode 40. We're mm-hmm. we're a show. We're 40. Oh, nice. <laughs> but, but we keep keeping it up. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, New York City, just the quick, the long and short of it. Um, I'm wearing a Princess Peach shirt that I got at the Nintendo World Shop. Fantastic. I forgot that it was there. Mario Wonder came out the week I was there. Just happened to be. It worked out perfectly. So I bought it there. Bought Tears of the Kingdom. Bought a, a Zelda shirt. I went there a couple times. But it's... I felt alive. <laughs> Hold <laughs> For the on. First you went time to the while, Nintendo... In a way I felt you went to the time. Nintendo store multiple times? <laughs> I did. Well, the first time I accidentally walked by it. And I was like... Holy shit! Well, that doesn't count <laughs> as going. Ah, <laughs> I've got a cab. <laughs> Just like one of those. And I was like, but they were setting up like a Mario Wonder release thing. And I was like, oh my god, Mario Wonder. And I was like, oh, let me find it. All reserved. Um, it was already booked up. But I went in the next day. But wherever I went to, it felt like I was in Mario World because I would go down into the subway. In, in New York, you can just come up in any warp pipe you want to. And you're in a different place, a different part of the world. And it's beautiful. We mentioned it. Like people said, it's going to be dangerous. And it, maybe it is. It probably is. You know what? There's 30 million people there. I see just as many homeless people in Auburn, New York. And I'm not exaggerating about that. Like in Manhattan where I was walking, like especially per capita, like I never felt dangerous. So just if you're listening, just don't believe everything your grandparents say or your crazy uncles say. I mentioned it. Um, it's a beautiful place. I went to museums, galleries, had awesome food. I couldn't stop walking. I encountered my own anxieties. When I arrived, I came up at Madison Square Garden from the train station um, after playing video games on the train. It was a wonderful thing. Um, check out my Instagram. Uh, I think I storied it up or whatever for the setup. But um, I was lost. Um, and I was a little bit anxious. Instagram at Ready Player Jones. Ready Player Jones. Oh, dude, what a pro. <laughs> you can't teach that. Um, but I came up uh, from the, the the subway, and I was like, I think I – or the train. I was like, I think there's a subway around here that I can just get to my hotel. I just got up there with my suitcase, and I was, t- I was like, holy shit, this is too much for me right now. I'm having anxiety, and I just walked through it. I just walk- I ended up walking to my hotel <laughs> throughout the city. You didn't, t- you like didn't a 35... take the subway? Mm-mm, because I was, I, was I was too overwhelmed. So I walked to my hotel, with rolling a suitcase for like forty minutes. So wait, was that was that? Hold on, the overwhelmed feeling was that too overwhelmed by like looking at the subway map, and you're like, I can't do this, so I'm gonna walk. Or were you like, I'm too overwhelmed? There's so many stimuluses, I need to plow through them, and it might be just better for me to just walk through the streets for this half hour before I get to a comfort zone. Like, yeah, started out with the first one and then merged into the second one that you said. Okay. So it was like. Just going into the train because it was like, you know what anxiety? You know what anxiety is, Jeff. You know, it's I just do. a fear of the unknown and like not knowing. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, am I going to get terrified when this train goes under the ground and under the city? And then, of course, that's the anxiety. And then it does, and I'm like, shit, shit, shit. And I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. And I was like, oh, I'm fucking in it. I'm loving it. And then I, I get off the train and I go upstairs and I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm looking for the train. And I'm like. Holy fuck, there's too much going on. There's like everywhere. It's like, God, that corner, that corner, this escalator, this escalator. And I was like, oh, fuck, I don't know. And I was like, 
I just got, I need air. I need air. I gotta come up, come up for air. So I just came up and then I was like, and then all of a sudden it's people. Cause you like midtown Manhattan where Penn station is. And all of a sudden I'm in Madison square garden and I'm locked in it. I can't find my way out. Cause there's construction going around. I can't find my way out. <laughs> I'm stuck in there. And I can't like find the exit, all that stuff's going on. And then I was just like, and then it's a bunch of tourists. And so I was, yeah, too much stimulus. And then I just started walking and every step I took made me feel good. And I kept walking and moving and I was like, I'm just going to keep walking and doing this and moving forward. Cause it's, I think I'm really having a lot of anxiety right now, but this is okay. This is okay. I like it. And I made it to the hotel. And so the whole trip was this, just kind of an exercise in dealing with different forms of anxiety. Cause then I got my subway ticket. I would go under and I was like, I can't find, you know, every anxiety that I met, um, I was able to deal with it and it was kind of crazy and a great exercise in it. And I appreciated it. And I loved going out and staying out late, going to like, like I would walk way too late, like the asset protection for Wegman. So it was a work trip. Like the asset protection gave us a list of things to do and do not do. And I broke like 80% of those things. <laughs> like this is Wow. They literally yeah. gave you a list of like, don't yeah. do this. Yeah. I bet you could guess what was on there. It's like, don't stand by a subway door. Don't walk alone at night. Don't go into an alley. Put your wallet in your front pocket. Like don't don't make have sure the headphones. poop goes into toilets. Like eat only yeah. food. Don't stab yourself in the face. Like good lord, stop it. Let yeah. people make mistakes. Let people get hurt. Let people figure it out. Yeah, it's clearly a liability thing that they're dealing with. Um. But I get, you know, people are afraid of things like cities and stuff. And I, I understand why. Because you could, you know what? Something bad could happen to you. Um, but it was great. I mean, museum, the Natural History Museum, I saw a dino, like millions of year old dinosaur bones. Then I walked through Central Park and I accidentally walked through strawberry fields, like the Beatles thing. Like I per was perpetually accidentally walking into things. I was walking like 10 miles a day. Um, and then like one night after I was working like four till late night. I would leave and I'd take a train out to Brooklyn to go to like the bar that had the most pinball tables in town or something like that. Okay. And it was really fun. I mean, I couldn't, um, it makes me want to live there or it did. I, mean, I don't know if I could for real, but I tell you this, when I got home, my train got canceled. So I had to take a flight home, um, which is fine. It was very fast. Uh, but I got back into my little, little apartment here at like midnight Sunday night last Sunday and I was depressed. <laughs> I got depressed this week from, you know, it was like, yeah. shit, I can't like go do anything at night anymore or like that. go see like a random Banksy graffiti art or go see a pterodactyl skeleton or um, go play different pinball games or go to eat um, the best tasting hot dog in the world. I mean, not that I'm going to miss that. A lot of places claim that. Best hot dog? Uh, yeah. That's not a really big accolade, though. How do you even know if no. you're having a really good hot dog? I don't even know what that would taste like. It's hot dogs or hot dogs. That's they, like the exactly. best peanut butter and Nailed jelly it. sandwich. <laughs> like, the, it's like, well, I mean, yeah. Eh. Um. I did have it from this place at the Chelsea food market or whatever. And it was like this butcher shop where they're like live butchering in front of you. They're like, we have the best tasting hot dog. Cause we like, it's all real meat and we do it here. And I was like, Oh sweet. So I had it there. It was called Dixon's and I ate it and I was like, still tastes like hot dog. Still has that. Right. Whatever that flavor is of hot dog. <laughs> that just doesn't escape, escape, escape your throat in your mouth. Just that glizzy throat, you know, you get for the rest of the day. Uh, but just did one, <laughs> just one. It's probably for the best. Yeah. Um, fuck, man. I could. I mean, I don't know. I could tell stories for like hours about it. I just really so enjoyed it. <laughs> I was gonna say, wow, <laughs> weird. Someone, someone went to New York City and they have a lot to say about it. So there's things to do. Like generally, there's things to do. It seems like you were <laughs> occupied. Is. That's good. That's good. How do I go forward from this? As a friend now, how do you, how do I do this? What do I do? Like I miss Moving it. I miss, uh, okay. I mean, I would say like in a week, especially cause I worked a lot of those days, like I, I crammed in as much as I could 
to do, especially for a work week. Like most people wouldn't be able to do it. If you live there, you probably wouldn't do as much as I did while you're working during sure. your work week. But I was like trying to like every, unless I was sleeping, I was never at the hotel. And I had a roommate. He's from North Carolina. Huh. He works at the Chapel Hill Wegmans and he was a good dude, you know, but like one night was a Thursday night. He was a, he's a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. Cause he's originally from Florida. I was like, Hey, what are you going to, are you going to, not when you get out, or are you gonna go like find the Jaguars bar in town? Because there's gotta be one you can like meet up. He's like, right, it's New York oh, City. I, 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 assume every, I assume every team is represented somewhere. Yes, you. Ha- yes, I accidentally like one day went to the beer. To, it was like this craft beer bar, and it ended up being the UT Longhorns, Texas Longhorns, like bar. <laughs> it just had a sign there, and I was like, how did I find this? It's like this is cool. That's like weird. so, every team must have a bar there. Uh, but he's like, no, I'm just gonna watch it in the room, probably order some. I was like, what the fuck? How are you going to be at New York like, City? You, know what? you can really? skip one Jaguars game even like you could not watch it. And yeah, it'll be okay. I know. I get it. You like them. You're very passionate for the Jaguars. Yeah, um, but skip a game or go or at least go somewhere. So like that was my thing. I was like, you got to go somewhere. You got to be moving. You got to be doing something. Um, But maybe that's all it is to me is like soaking it in. Maybe I just need to travel more. I don't know. I was excitable and then I got depressed and now winter's happening and it's starting. In the Northeast, yeah. Um, so it's all happening at once. <laughs> That's <laughs> I think true. I'm about to be sad. It's tough to come <laughs> off of a vacation into turning the clocks back. That's yeah. that's a rough that's a rough one two punch to handle psychologically. And I say that with a chuckle in my voice, but I'm 100 percent being empathetic <laughs> with you. Um. <laughs> What do I do? I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, I, I am not the person to consult for that um, because I don't know what to do. Um, I'm really bad. I and... cannot talk about it without crying. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am really, I have a, I mean, that is a notorious attribute that I have is, is I'm really bad at just trying to keep positive outside of interacting with people. Um, I use people as the crutch. I need to be doing stuff. I need... <clears throat> I, I want to do stuff like, like, that's why I'm a, I think I'm a big fan of like board games, cards, stuff like that. It's, it's an activity where there's the wild card aspect of interacting with other people. So like I, you know, sometimes I try to play like video games, take my mind off stuff and it works sometimes, but definitely not often, uh, not often enough as I try, but yeah, like I said, I'm like that whole being content not needing other people to bring me up. Like that's the hardest part is right. Is what, what do I do by myself that makes me not upset about this? And it's really hard. I'm still searching for that. And obviously I need to get a handle on that because you can't rely on hanging out with other people or, you know, even anyone you're just on a daily interaction with, like it's not responsible for me to rely on someone else to make me just not generally bothered by stuff like that and but i also don't want to medicate to it um because i've tried that in the past and that that has gone awry uh for me so i and i and it's not a long-term solution so right what what do you do and the problem with it is that how do you harnessing your emotions is not something that's easy like, especially I think if you're a person who acknowledges that you're being irrational and stuff is even when you're not having the bad times, how do you figure out what the best thing to do is when they come up? Um, because it's kind of like your logic brain arguing with your emotional brain and your emotional brain is always going to win. How you feel yes. is For always me, going sure. to beat beat your logic <laughs> brain and you're like, yeah, your kind of uh, your your comprehension of how you kind of formulaic way of doing things, which I like. I, I like the science math stuff, and so I try to like resolve it. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to find the answer to something that's unanswerable, and yeah. So in 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 conclusion, yeah, absolutely. Travel more. Do stop go to new, live in new york city you should move right now today but no i'm just kidding because i've done that in the past too and it doesn't <laughs> okay, work like that. just That's kidding what I wanted to hear. just what kidding I wanted to hear. it doesn't work because i've done it many times before 
Yeah. Your problems will follow you. <sighs> it's like such a good. It was for a second. I was like, feel. I was like, I need yep. somebody to tell me to move to New York City. Um, they don't. You know, they don't have my position there at the store. Like I was, so we were doing it there, and they didn't know what to do with me. Um, but it was fine. I just walked around the store and helped out wherever I could. Okay. Um, I had a great battle of like the logic versus emotional brain, mm-hmm. though. Um, when I was there, you're gonna. This is gonna make you sad. This story. <laughs> uh, I. So you remember my? I don't know. I think I have it around me. I bought like my expensive, whatever, like my on the Prime days, the Beats headphones, for, like 150 uh-huh. bucks. Sure. Well, one night, I just again walking through the city, walked south, just kept walking. I think I went to like a. It used to be a prohibition bar, one of the last two that's remaining in the city. That's like a secret thing. It says like Lower Manhattan East Side Toy Shop is on the door. So I went down there, had a couple of whiskeys, and I was like, oh, let me walk this off. I want to see the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm going to go get the subway. No. Oh, I don't know where the station. I keep walking. All right. So 30 minutes later, walk <laughs> like midnight. I get to the water and I, I'm just on there and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I'm taking all kinds of pictures. This is beautiful. And uh, it's like the stars are out. It's like by this warehouse area. And I was like, God, I can't believe I walked at night. It's like I'm such a hero. Look at me. What a <laughs> just really overcoming the odds. But then there's, of course, there's like 13 year old girls doing TikToks over at the pier. I'm like, I guess it'll, it's all right. Correct. <laughs> it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you hear that, ladies? I and, overcame uh, the odds. Yeah, sure, sir. <laughs> yeah. Do you know my dad? Uh, and then I was like, and then I'm like, I'm really like 45 minutes into this, like, soliloquy i'm giving myself and just writing in my phone like as a journal about how i'm feeling and just comprehending the night and just being able to feel this and what the broken bridge is doing to me and making me feel and then i'm about to say i'm gonna walk and i was like it's like what oh wait oh that's the brooklyn bridge over there (laughs) 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 yes I was what at the bridge Manhattan at? Bridge. <laughs> yeah. oh, I mean, the they're bridge very close. So I definitely, I saw it, but all the pictures I was taking was of the Manhattan <laughs> Bridge. <laughs> I was like, I was having this really spiritual experience with the wrong bridge. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, that was good. So I didn't realize until I was about uh, to leave. And then I started walking away. I see rats going all over. I was like, this is a, what a great experience I've had. Nice and yeah. whiskeyed up and just having a night. Um, so I get my lift home and, uh, get back to the hotel and my, I'm going to go get a slice. There was a spot like two blocks away from the hotel, 99 cent slices. Perfect. I was like, Oh, this is great. They're open late. Yeah, you can get a little soda there too. Cause I was like, Hey, Oh, here's $3. I'll take two slices. Like hey, get a soda. And I was like, it'll make it even out. And I was like, I'm not going to, no, I want to give you a tip or something. He's like, I get a soda. And I was like, great. You know, here's five bucks. I'm going to pay it forward. Like you guys are open late. I'm having a great night. Eat, eat, a, eat a couple slices on the street. Um, sure. a little sody, walk back to the hotel, go to the 24 hour CVS, get my coconut water, you know, for the next day and all that, go back to the hotel. And I'm like, I reach in my, I'm like, my headphones are gone. I just realized that like my head, I was like, fuck, wait, where are they? No, I can't find my headphones. No. So then, and I, yeah, I was like, fuck. I was like, they could be at the, uh, the speakeasy that I was at. They could have fallen the out Manhattan on the way bridge. when I was walking. Yeah, it could be at the Brooklyn Bridge or the Manhattan Bridge. I don't know one of them. Uh, a little tween TikToker could have picked it up. Yeah, they could be at the pizza place. Um, they could be in the lift. So I texted that guy, like whatever. I was like, hey, lost and found. Do that. Nothing. No response. So I wake up the next morning, and now I'm dealing with the hate that I have for myself that I lost these headphones. Okay. Um, and I don't know how I could have. So I go to, I already spent, uh, this is like, I, this is my extra day because my train was canceled. So I'm going to, I'm going to really spend the day. I have an extra, essentially an extra day in New York because my, I had to book a flight to go late night. So I was like, I'm going to get a massage. That's way too expensive. And I'm going to go buy myself a new pair of headphones, the exact same. Cause I hate, I hate so much. My emotions are saying like, I hate so much that I lost these. I got to replace them because it's like it's tied to me now that I I would right. wear these headphones in New York. These are like my New York headphones and they're like part of my nostalgia and that I walk. I'm a city guy now. Like one day somebody asked me if they were on the right train and I was like, I'm here now, baby. I'm here. Get out of my way. I'm a New York boy. <laughs> like these are my headphones <laughs> that are part of it. I got to go buy a new pair for two hundred dollars. I did. I did go buy a new wow. pair. Wow. 
for two hundred dollars at a Best Buy, the exact same headphones. Go get the massage. Uh, that was with a tip, one hundred and ninety dollars. Don't worry about it. I'm, I am just hemorrhaging cash at this point because I gotta feel good. <laughs> and uh, I get up from my massage, check my phone. Lyft driver. Yeah, I found him. Eighteen hours later, <laughs> it's like you fucking. Did you get him back? Why would you? So yeah, so then I'm like, why well, already threw away the packaging for the ones I bought at Best Buy? I'm oh my them in god, right away. Matt. So. Then I go to this other spot in like the Lower East Side. I'm like, so I'm like, yeah, how do I get it back? What do I do? Do I have to request it? Doesn't answer me again. Like all day. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what's going That's on. That's the worst. I know. And then I'm like, I finally, I guess there's like call, as I call this guy, he finally answers. I'm like, hey, I was like, hey, dude, I got it in two, in two hours. I'm like going to the airport. I don't know what I got to do. I want these headphones. What do I got to do to get them back? He's like, where are you? And I was like, here, X, Y, Z. And I'm like, okay, I'll come. He came and said it was going to be 30 minutes. It ends up being like an hour and a half. So I'm just chilling at like a bar by a little, it's called like Tompkins Square or something like that. If I walk around there, it was a cool spot. Okay. And he shows up, finally get the headphones. So he charges me $20 for a lift to do it. And I pay him like an extra 50 bucks for a tip. So like he had to drive all the way from the Bronx. I'm like, whatever. He took forever to respond to me. So now uh, in the end, because of my emotions over my logic, I have two pairs uh, beats <laughs> fitness whatever pro headphones you're so ballin man it man Dude, and it's ridiculous. what do i you do got with beats them and you have your backup beats bro that is that <laughs> what do is i intense. do i so i'm like do i i don't well, what I'm do, like, do i do? sell them do i just keep How does clearly that... they're easy to lose for me i mm, i'd say are, what what kind of headphones are they? Are, are around the ear? Are they just very yeah, tiny so they're, they're earbuds? Like pods, then they wrap around the ear so that they okay. stay in. They're like sweat resistant deals. I, I do that. like those types. I like the the wireless they sound pods. So good. They, yeah. Well, you know that's. Do you have your right? Do you use your one pair and have your another pair for something else? Like do you? Right. Yeah. Put them. Put one so pair I'm in like, your travel bag. Yeah. I don't know. I'm four hundred dollars deep into two pairs of headphones now, basically with the cost of like getting them back Let, let's like, be honest i think i gotta keep them let's be honest if you tried selling them how well is that gonna work what are you gonna get on them for a return gently used <laughs> right i don't think there's a big market for gently used headphones yeah um, a picture of my inner ear canal and when did you buy them on amazon was that july or was that the most recent no, prime like weeks like ago october. I mean, whatever whenever prime that was the were, october like three weeks ago okay yeah Ooh, I might be in a window to you, return them still. You could, re- yeah, it's a 30 day the return window. Ones. Yeah. But see, again, my emotions are like, keep them both because it's a story now. And then I can have extra. And then it's like, still I'll a story about the without them. So that's, that's a dumb, <laughs> that's a dumb, that's not even logic. I don't know what that is because the story doesn't like disappear because you keep two. What I mean, do whatever the, uh, you want, man. I, I, but that's a stupid reason, is what I'm telling you. It's does the two hundred not two hundred dollars is them. gone next year anyway. Like next year, I'll be like, fuck it. Like, am I do I am I glad I got like one hundred fifty dollars back? I don't know. Or am I glad I have two pairs of the same headphones? <laughs> right. I, my brain thinks of that too. As I'm like, I'm like, yeah. you aren't even gonna acknowledge <laughs> this concept of money in like a month. So no, like, not. leave it alone, I'm an man. Idiot. <laughs> so dumb. So. But two headsets, like, you just have two pairs of headsets. There's no such thing as simultaneous need for headsets and stuff. Like, no. They're, uh, yeah. Because the battery know, power is real good. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, right. Exactly. So, yeah, it's it's not like, well, you know, it's nice because then I, if I'm charging one, I can use it. No. They're headphones. So, it's it's literally your king of the castle if you lose a pair again. I don't know. I, I personally, I can Should only I tell you what it? I would do, and I would return the ones to What Amazon. would you do? Return. I would return them to That's Amazon. smart. That's smart. Do I, though, pitch them, because I'm in the middle of crafting a Hinge dating profile. I'm back in, baby. Okay. For that. I'm no Tinder, no Bumble. I'm going to try out Hinge. Okay. You know, because I'm a relationship guy. That's now. much better than it. unhinged. That would be a, yeah. that'd be a questionable <laughs> Which, uh, dating site. Yeah. Um, do I pitch that in the profile is just looking for somebody that needs a 
a set of uh, Beats Fitness Pro headphones. That's how you ask, get like, ask me why I had to. I think, mm-hmm. like, because that's like introduce begging them for you to tell them your icebreaker. Ask me why I have an yeah. extra pair of Beats headphones. Ask me why. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they could be yours. Do you like headphones? Am I rich or stupid? Right. You decide. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to know each other and you All find right. out if I'm rich or stupid. <laughs> yeah. Please have low expectations. Yeah, man. Dude, I mean, tell me about I, I got wrestling live. Yeah, right, so I, I went I've I monopolized went, this program. I, Let's go. I, I got to hear AEW. I, I went to AEW Dynamite. Dynamite. You saw the Nature Boy. I know that. I did. I did. So for those He's of you wondering, AEW is is the is the alternative to the WWE. Um started about four years ago. And it's a mix of a lot of new names, but also a lot of guys that no that WWE no longer has under contract end up going there. Some for the better, some certainly for the worse. But we were there and you may remember the surfer slash crow looking fella, Sting was there and i'm like this is exciting i never got to see sting because i never saw wcw um when i was in high school or anything like that so it was cool and then they said they had a surprise for him because sting is going to be retiring at the very very early age of 65 next year and rick flair (laughs) came out Woo! that's right the nature boy so he was there rumors did you expect it a level of like maybe it was like a 60 percent expectation because it's like oh okay. there's going to be a surprise for sting i don't like no one's expecting a neat birthday cake like it's wrestling you're probably a surprise yeah. is probably a person so he looks horrible like god bless he is still alive but man he yeah. he is looks like a man who's been wrestling for 50 years so um, that was yeah, really cool. around like you look like a ball sack pretty often, but right. he looks like one half of a ball sack, like just a testicles escaping from the skin of his head. That's true. Like just veiny it's... red. Um, he looks like he could fall over hairs, at any given second. Like sweating. Yeah. 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 He, he does not look well. Um, but it was great seeing him as well as some other big 90s names. You know, if you're a fan, when wrestling was at its peak, arguably in like that 97 to 99 era, the Attitude Era, if you will, there, there were Jeff and Matt Hardy were there. Um, <laughs> I got to see Christian and Edge and Chris Jericho. Um, so a lot of big names. And I'll tell you. You go to a live wrestling event and just like any live professional sporting event, you're like, this is fantastic. Like what a, what a ridiculously pumped up environment. Um, it's, there's nothing like wrestling. It really is the combo of like watching a movie and watching sports because you're like, I know it's fake, but I don't care. I'm excited. And this is rad. It's like a rest, a good wrestling event is like what, when you watched Avengers Endgame. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like, you're so into it. Like, whether it's how much time you've put into the storyline up until this point, and it's finally culminating. But that's the energy you get from a live wrestling event. So if you've never been to one, listeners, I suggest it. Um, I'm not saying go to, like, uh, your local VFW for an indie uh, independent wrestling match that has like random people in it. But if you, if, if AEW or WWE ever comes to town, I highly suggest it. Matt's obviously gone to, to WrestleMania, but um, it, it was a blast. It's a really good time. Really didn't cost much at all. I think our tickets for the floor were like 65, $67, something like really? that. Were you yeah, in so, a TV? Like, were you on in this, in the show? No, Did you check or no. So, if you uh, like, we were like, if from the what's uh, the the steady TV camera that where you know the the still shots of people wrestling in the ring, we'd be off to the right of that and out of the original frame. But sometimes they do panning shots and you'd see the boom cam go over. So nothing identifiable. I did stand out though. I was wearing a jet black hoodie. Just kidding. That yeah, I could blend. I wouldn't be able to see myself on TV one way or another. But um, no, nothing. Not being on TV. Um, Ooh, you just went, did you really just wear a jet black hoodie? I, I wore a, no, Nothing it was like up. a, it was like a black under armor t- hoodie. So it just had white under okay. armor 
emblem on the front. What would your fit was going to be if you're going to make a statement or not, you know? I know, I know. I should have really wrestler. just should have dressed up for it, but um I I did dress up though the uh last weekend. Um reason for my dress up last weekend is I ran a 5K in the gritty 5K held by the Philadelphia Flyers in South <laughs> Philadelphia. Gritty. Yeah. So, yeah. yep, ran a 5K and since it was near Halloween, I decided, you know what? I haven't been running a lot, so this isn't going to be for any sort of personal record. Like, I'm not going to get a PR. Not going to happen. So to sell myself more on that and kind of be like, well, you're certainly not going to get a personal record now. I'm like, I'm going to dress up. I've never been the guy who's dressed up goofy for like a 5K. So I'm like, I'm going to wear a costume. So I went on to Amazon because I needed it post haste. And I found a great costume. Because it's held by the Flyers, so I could dress up in a hockey theme, and it's in October, <laughs> so that's okay. So I went in this majestic onesie of the District 5 Mighty Ducks. Um, District it came, 5, that's good. Yeah, it was like the green with like the weird duck guy on the front. Like It was the District 5 Ducks, um, and oh it came gosh. with a nice plush helmet as well. Um, so I ran suited up and boy, did I stick out cause it was a green outfit with black hockey pants, but mostly a green outfit and everyone else is wearing flyers colors. And for those that don't know, flyers colors are black and orange. So green stood out dramatically <laughs> in a sea of thousands of runners. So that was fun. Um, yeah, you know, I did happen to see a picture of that because mm-hmm. Your girlfriend and I now follow each other on Instagram. Ah, yeah. That's big news. It took 30-something sure. episodes. How does that make <laughs> you feel? How does that make you feel? Let's get I, into it. All right. Well, um, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, she's well aware of this podcast, and she's well aware of you even pre-podcast, but now I think it's just kind of a, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a general a general connection. Um, they, uh, Caitlin and Matt have still never met in physical form. That's not a thing. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, it's a gradual process. You know, it's twenty. Your worlds That's are what uniting, happens. Jeff. What's that? Your worlds are uniting. I guess. Yeah. She's a sure. She's a big old sports sports head. Is that a thing? <laughs> she, she does like her, her Philadelphia sports. sporting, sporting and re- yeah, she does. How she did does. uh, how did the uh, you know, a lot of her content is sports related, Philly sports. Um, and I can't imagine the the Phillies exit from the playoffs went over very well. It didn't. Um, she hates watching. It's weird. She hates watching important games. So unlike. Fair weather fans. She does the opposite. She doesn't show up during playoffs. She gets nervous and like reluctantly watches the playoffs, but like will like leave the room on purpose because it makes her too tense. So, um, I often have to be like, "Hey, come in the room. This just happened, or this just happened." But she also gets alerts too, yeah. like crazy on her phone. So there was definitely a situation that arose in multiple games where I had to tell her, "You need to stop wearing your watch." while I'm watching this game because your watch is giving you updates and she'd wa- look at her watch and be emotional and go like, Oh, or, Ooh. and I'm like, I'm watching baseball. I'm like, you need to stop because like two pitches later, something would oh, happen. The watch was faster than yes. The, and I was getting really TV. bothered with it. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I like my sports, please. Like yeah. it took away from a lot of intense for the better or worse. It took away a lot of the, credibility of the game and like i'm like why aren't i experiencing emotions i'm like oh it's because i know what the outcome is before i see it and that was really frustrating i'm like you need to either do one of two things you either need to harness and not show emotion if you're going to look at updates and you have to look at your watch discreetly so i don't know something happened in one way or another or just take your damn watch off put it in the other room while we watch this game those are the options because listen i once had a situation about 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago now, I think, that a friend of mine 
was in a production of Les Miserables. And oh, um, myself and a couple others went to support him at his uh, at his performance as Jean Valjean. Um, and so we're like, we're going to tape the Duke Syracuse game. And we'll we'll go radio silent and we'll not we'll turn off our phones, not look at it. And we'll come back after his production. We will watch the game. So we get to intermission. Everything's fine. And right before the intermission's over, some stupid old man is like, all right, everyone, take your seats. All right, we're going to start back up here in about 30 seconds. And for those of you that wanted to know, yes, Syracuse beat Duke. And we're like, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I've never wanted to strike an old man as much as I did then. I was <laughs> livid. And and I'm lucky, too, because so was so was my buddy who was with me. It. It is the most, fr- I'm like, it's, it's 2011. This isn't 1973 where a little newsy has to run in and be like, I heard it on the radio. They said Syracuse won. Like, <laughs> no, we all, if anyone wants to know the fucking score, they will check their phones. You stupid bastard. So I was livid. I'm like, it makes no sense to announce that you're either announcing it to people who don't care or you're announcing it to people who are trying to actively avoid it. You horrible, horrible man. I literally wanted to say something to him so bad. It literally ruined the rest of my night. I couldn't even enjoy act two because I had to worry about how much hate I had built up for this man. So since then, yeah, I, been I, great. I won't, was I won't DVR was like, sports. I was wondering, I right, was exactly. wondering, I don't have a phone and I'm not going to watch it later. Right. I so appreciate that because I don't like sports, but hooray for that. Like, oh, so stupid. Spoiling stuff. That's 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 really being a piece of shit. If you spoil movies, TV shows, sports, like if you post about something as soon as you see it happen and you post vivid descriptions online, like you get back from the brand new movie and you go like, I can't believe Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. Like, don't. Why? Why are you Spoiler. doing that? Have have a conversation with someone. If you want to talk about the movie, don't be like, hey, world, here's my thought on that big epic ending like stop it spoiling stuff makes you a piece of shit you know um when i was dating my girlfriend edna like 10 years ago i did basically make her watch star wars Mm -hmm. and of course as you do in a relationship in a healthy relationship you make your girlfriend watch star wars or lord of the rings or whatever you're into um and (laughs) she had she didn't know she didn't know. So we were watching Empire Strikes Back. And he goes, no, I am your father. She goes, no, he's lying. What? He's lying. And I was like, are you fucking serious? Did, yeah, did you just you do the slow turning off? Awesome? I was like, I was like, holy shit. I'd never in my life imagined I'd ever like know anybody that didn't know right. that that happened. Did you then go like, hold on, sit there. We're going to watch The Sixth Sense next. And it's going to blow your fucking <laughs> yeah. mind. Like, Dude, you're not going to believe the end of Titanic. <laughs> it's going to be Dude, Pearl Harbor. Wow. You. You're never going to see yeah. it coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to go more Citizen Kane, but you went right for the throw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that would be a great. Ooh, I should put that in my hinge. Like really looking to rewatch Star Wars Breaking Bad for sure. I've been looking for a reason to watch Breaking Bad again. So. Looking to find somebody who I can stare at when they watch Breaking Bad. Oh, no. You don't want to <laughs> do that. Time. That's so bad. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> it's too good of a show. Why? Because be- because oh. if they don't receive it well, you're going to be upset. I would. Ooh. But it's a deal breaker then. Oh, you're not into Breaking Bad? Shut up, bitch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That was my... That's how Matt aggressive Paul. Matt sounds. That's that's what a, that's what Very aggressive good. Matt sounds like. Yeah. Very assertive. That was my uh, yeah. That was my impression. Um, <laughs> oh, you know I was gonna. So when you're oh watching God. these baseball games, yeah. so I know you're not a Phillies fan. Do you adapt to being into your girlfriend's team then? Do you become yeah. a Phillies fan when she's into it? Okay. Yeah, I can. That's that's not a problem for me. Um, growing up. Uh, the biggest dynamic was like, be, be, like enjoying the Raiders and, and Giants. Um, always 
love the Raiders, but always can enjoy the Giants and root for the Giants too. I don't see the conflict. Um, if you're if you're a fan of a sport and teams are certainly in opposite leagues, uh, most sports being divided, actually all the major sports are divided into two leagues. I think you can have definitely have two conferences, um, you know, a, a favorite team in each conference if you want. And I don't think that's too much of a conflicting ideal. Yeah, time comes around. They do play each other. Make a decision, I guess. Enjoy them both, but you got to have a rooting aspect. You can't say it doesn't matter which one wins. That's stupid. But yes, I, th- I, I I'm okay with supporting another team. And in baseball, I love the sport too much that I just I do pick I do choose a rooting interest for one team over the other. Actually, this World Series is really tough to do that. So by the time people are hearing this, this might actually the World Series is likely over. Um, but at the time of this recording, Arizona is up two to zero on the Texas Rangers. And I'll tell you, that's a pile of poop of a world series that no one wanted at the beginning of the year. The Texas Rangers. Versus what the didn't Arizona Texas win a game? Didn't they win the first game? No, didn't. Right, oh yeah. Well. Texas won in overtime or overtime. Jesus Christ. Extra innings. Um, Dude, five, six, this five. So comes out in two days too, by the way, we are, no, it doesn't. This is going to be hot. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, this is going to be sizzling. This is so confusing. This is going to be sizzling. So, so there's a game tonight. Yes, I'm sorry. Weird. It is one, one. <laughs> Sorry, Arizona beat up on te- wow. on, on on Arizona. Oh my God, Arizona beat up on Texas two days ago. So it it is tough because um, I I don't want I don't want either of these teams winning, and and the reasons why is because there's uh, uh, Max Scherzer on the Texas Rangers. I think is is stupid that he is a pile of crap and just wins a ring for showing up halfway at the end of the year. Um, and the Arizona Diamondbacks aren't good. They're just the better team right now. They're it's streaky. This feels like wrong. It feels dirty that like the seventh best or I think it was the twelfth best team by record is currently in the World Series and might win the the championship over everyone else. Like and that's dumb to me. I don't like. I like my random stuff being more towards like NCAA basketball. Who doesn't like a uh, Cinderella story? But I generally do want to see the best teams win their championships. Um, so a top four team, I would like to see win the championship in in sports. Football's tough because you, do you have yeah. to run the gamut. Yeah. It's been like that in like almost every sport lately where like whoever gets hot at the right time, it seems like more than the best team throughout the year. So like, but in England, in their premiership, their their soccer league, their football, their standings are determined just straight up. You play, you don't have playoffs. No you tournament. just go through. Yeah. Are what are you pro pro against? Uh, or well, maybe there's different. I uh, think there strat- should be different what, things. Different things in the playoffs. I think there should be different. You should, you should consider them different things. I think we should build up more who was the champion of the year. And then you could have a playoff. Um, That'll never happen. But I think that would be prime. I think that would be have two prestigious titles, one tournament winner and one league champion. So I, that's how I would like to see it. Um, I just think of like the Stanley cup where it's like, yeah, but you want to win the Stanley cup all the time. You don't want to, I know win that's what I'm saying. You can't, you can't is. undo <laughs> what we have done. You can't, you can't fix it. Um, so they should give you more of an advantage in the playoffs. Like if you were like the number one team, of the year. It shouldn't be like four games at home, three on the road. You should get all the games at home. That's what I say. Look out sports. I mean, I know that fucks with five, the financials, but five hey. and two. Hey, Hey, we're not going to get on ESPN without getting hot takes out there. Like how could, yeah. Could you so. do like, could you argue that it should go like three, two, two instead of two, three, two, do three, two, two. So three mm-hmm. home, two away, mm-hmm. two back home. That would be nice. I'd be that. down for that. I'd be down for that. I support that method. Wow, we'll, what an uh, A-block. We'll write what a letter to on G- pardon our take or whatever. We'll, uh, we'll write a letter to Gary Bettman's office, and you know we'll just see how it goes. We'll just see where that letter goes. Wait for our response. Wait patiently. Um, you know, well, um, well, two things. Number one, I'm a, I want to announce a listener of the week. His name is Ryan S. And he works at Wegmans in the dairy. And he's a young fella. Wow. He, I mentioned him before, not by name, because he was the kid who was upset that I talked about a stripper and wanted to know if she had a kid or something like that. 
But yep. I was talking to him the other day, and he started listening to the podcast like the other day, and he's like, guess what episode I'm on? I'm like, I don't know. Like, what are you just, I don't know, like 21? He's like, no, four. I was like, wait. I was like, are you listening through them all? He's like, yeah. I was like, dude, why are you doing that? <laughs> so my hope is that by the time he gets to 40, he'll hear this. And Ryan, if you're listening to this, um, you can't wear your headphones at work. You got to take them out. Okay. So wow. I'm going to write you up. Wow. Um, you're fired. Ryan, if you're listening to this, you're fired. What the hell? So now. But congrats. Yeah. Congrats on being the listener of the week. Right. You are listener of the week, <laughs> but you are fired effective as to when you hear this. <laughs> so yeah. you're going to need to be on the honor system because we don't know when you're listening. Yeah. But uh, you are your, fired. Pack up your belongings congrats. and walk out sadly. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I was thinking, so he just because he was talking about the words, he, I think, I don't know if you like the idea of it, whatever. Okay. I want to do a, a different avenue of exploring a story this week. Do you have your phone with you? I do. I would imagine you do. I do. Um, you pull up your contact list. Okay. Maybe just do a quick scroll and find somebody like a random number or a name that you haven't thought about in a long time and the story associated with them. Like, why are they in your phone book? Do you even remember them? Like, I, I, I'm about to look. The only reason I thought of that is because I, I was looking for her to call my sister earlier. Um. I forgot well, she's under peas for Batane. Uh Also, fun fact, um, Jeff's cousin is married to my twin sister. We've never announced that. That's Fish true. For a 40th episode announcement. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that is true, folks. That's not we're, that's not a stupid story we're, we're making up. Yeah. That's actual. My twin sister is married to Jeff's cousin. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so there's that. Yep. Um, and you would think because of that, we would have seen each other at a wedding. No, they didn't have like a real wedding official yep. wedding or that we would see each other more through family events or something. No, nope. Much less. doesn't work that way. Still, <laughs> we we see each not. other much less <laughs> since in yeah, the time that not. they've been married, we've seen each other yeah. that, less than the, that amount of time before they were married. Right. So, um, that's you, why yeah, we coined the term brothers in law. We are brothers in law <laughs> because my cousin it is his, his brother in law. So, all right, let me, um, uh, should should I like like just like scroll? dude? There's literally numbers in here. I don't even know who they are. Oh yeah, me too. Should I just like scroll and like stop? Ooh, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it like that. All right. Don't yeah. accidentally call somebody. Ooh, wow, that's weird. I I almost oh, landed on fun. your sister. Easy, bud. What I don't even hell? know if this is still I don't even know if this is still her number because this might have been from 15 years ago. I what? landed on a guy named Ken Scotch. Okay. And he used to come into the liquor store. Funny enough, but his real last name was Scotch. It wasn't because he drank Scotch. His real last name was Scotch. Marvelous. And he was probably I'm guessing he was and still is like 10 to 15 years older than me. Um, wasn't still as 10, he 10 kinda, 15 years older. Yeah. So, like, I really liked, like, that was my favorite part of working at the liquor store because, like, I would basically be there all day. So people thought I owned it just because I was there by myself all the time. I mean, I just ran it, basically. But uh, I would just shoot the shit with a bunch of people. I mean, I I got dates from it. I have, you know what? Maybe I'll save it for our annual, our, our spec, a- annual spectacular anniversary program. One of the, the hottest dishes i have to serve still hasn't been announced yet uh revolving around a woman that i met from that store um but we'll talk about ken (laughs) so ken like i don't know how we ended up talking about like he's the guy that basically got me into pinball so i would like because i the reason i started to sort of get into it is because xbox had like whatever during one of their christmas whatever thanksgiving sales i bought like the pinball fx game and it was like like the physics of it were really good. So that's when I was like, Oh, this is kind of fun. Like, I wish I kind of want to like play pinball now. And like one day he and I were just talking about it in the store and he was like, yeah, there's a spot pinball. It's like, yeah, we should like, when do you work? And so I, I just met him up there one day and he, he started like coaching me and showing me like the machines and like how they worked. And he got me into real, one in particular called junkyard. And, like he would bring, cause I would like go in there and put my money on like the card, the digital, like, and then like put it on the machine, like tap it so that could, I could play. 
he would bring in a fucking roll of quarters every time, straight up. Yeah, roll of quarters, <laughs> literally in the roll and play. He'd be like, "Say do this," but I don't know. It's really fun. I think because he was from Boston too, so he used to talk Bruins and whatever. I think he was just a cheap vodka guy, but a good conversationalist, and yeah, he's the one that got me into pinball. So. Uh, damn, I haven't thought about him in a while. For some reason, even when I was still living in Austin, we stopped. I think when I stopped working at the liquor store, we just never kept up. Um, but yeah, we'd be the guys at like noon on a Wednesday going to the pinball arcade because obviously no kids or whatever. And uh, it's like a lot of the games were cheaper. Uh, oh, but good dude, man. Sure. Very positive. Just like, uh, you know what? I'm going to call him right now. I'm going to call <laughs> So he's okay. generally your inspiration for our aforementioned story of grandma's house, the pinball yeah. place. He is. So he's he's yep. a big player. Without him, there's no grandma's house. Yeah. Yeah. Without Ken Scotch, there is no grandma's house. That's fun. Wow. Damn. A contact lists are a hell of a thing, huh? Holy shit. Yep. And What's a yours? beverage you can serve is Wednesdays. There's discounts on pinball and Ken Scotch. There's you can get a glass of scotch <laughs> half oh, off nice. as well as half off pinball. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's going to be the the plan for grandma's yeah. uh, grandma's house. So um, mine was uh, Eric. Um, Eric is a manager or I don't know if he's still there was a manager at my previous employer um, hired me when I moved from Buffalo to New Jersey. So he was the kind of one of the first people in New Jersey that I met because he was the guy that I interviewed with and hired me. Um, fun thing with Eric is that Eric was very much younger than me. Um, er- Eric was my boss and like, I'm, I'm fairly certain I got about 10 years on him. Um, so that was always an interesting. How old were you when you met him? I would have been 30. Well, you- five okay so he's so like I, a recent think, college grad kind oh of? yeah yeah he was uh in like the managerial yeah. like expedited program um so he got hired in as a golden child you know got to management real quick they sp- fast tracked him and he he was 10 years younger than me and looked 20 years younger than me eric great guy looked like he was 13 um so interesting uh dynamic and I don't know if he was just laid back as a person or if he understood that he was like the young guy and like to save face, he was a very laid back manager and like really supportive. He never like really came down like on like, Hey, you got to do this better or something. It was almost always yeah. positive. Cause I'm like, I don't know if it's he thinks he's fighting. Yeah. I don't know if he thinks <laughs> automatically he's fighting a very uphill battle. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know what? Um, he was, he was an easy guy to work for. And that goes a long way with me. I do better when I like the manager. It's as simple as that. If I, if I don't like the manager, it's not that I'm trying to wrong them, but I get bent out of shape and me being bent out of shape is going to affect my work. So, um, yeah, I always appreciate them. Um, as far as any stories, you know, more intense that go with that. Not really. Um, again, I think he was a fun guy, but, uh, my previous employer was always, you know, Geico was very harped on no association between like levels. Like you cannot hang out with your manager. You cannot be pleasant with a manager outside of work. Everything is in subordination. You probably shouldn't high five them. It's a liability liability factor. So, (laughs) which is, is stupid in my opinion. Um, in this day and age, you have to, you have to work with your team. Um, you have to have a level like that's literally pushing, level that's pushing communication right out the fucking door. If you harp on people to like, not see each other on any sort of like human level. (laughs) Like I feel like that's adverse to what logic would dictate. Um, so he, he didn't really have the opportunity, um, to be anything more, but he seemed like a really fun guy. I I haven't seen him since I left Geico. Um, but you know, I I hope he's well and yeah, you don't know anything about him at all. Like, no, like I, socials, anything like that. No, no. Um, I think I, I probably like may have like looked him up on like, I, you know, what's funny is I used to like to look up people on, um, on LinkedIn. I actually closed my LinkedIn account, but I used to look at people up because yeah, I wanted, I want, I wanted to be like how, now that I know you as a person, how fucking lame and like 
chintzy is your LinkedIn? And the answer is to everyone's LinkedIn. It's like, you, oh, this is ever, it is everyone at their douchiest. Like, and I hated myself about it. Like because connections like, and well, it's just, yeah. you know what? My brother and I will literally send each other. Shit. Like my brother will still send me LinkedIn, like screenshots of like generic stuff where it's like, I'm going to post a little something about how to be a great manager. One care about your employees Two, you know, like <laughs> listen three, you know, uh, be supportive. It's like, Whoa, groundbreaking. But that's literally all LinkedIn is. <laughs> it's everyone just blowing each other and trying to be like, a Ted talk and it's fucking disgusting. It turned, it it was a logical, reasonable outlet for people to connect on jobs, but it just became literally Facebook junior, actually arguably worse because it's supposed to be something business oriented, but it's just people being douchey and like everyone trying to be like the next big thing with outside the box thinking like Simon Sinek um, type people. So it's, it's disgusting. So I had to get off. Assistant to the regional manager. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, Eric's not that guy. So that was the last time I probably looked him up. But good guy. Hope he's well, dude. I like that. Let's do. You want to do that more? Yeah, I am I like fine. That yeah, that's fine. The scroll. The scroll to know. What? What's the name for it? Scroll. Scroll averse. Scroll them. Hmm. Scroll them. Hardly know them. <laughs> Scrolled them. <laughs> scrolled them. <laughs> yeah. Scroll. Because what'd you do? I scrolled yeah. them. Scroll them. Yeah. S C R O L L E D apostrophe E M. Scroll them. Oh, hell yeah. Merch. There we go. Scroll them. Yep. Just t shirts that say scroll them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to leave. Did you, I got to know. Did you get any merch? AEW. Do you have a new t shirt? I did not. Um, unfortunately, the replica belt for the heavyweight championship was $850 more than I was willing to spend. Holy shit. That's like more than a WWE one, isn't it? $850 like, for the replica belt. Holy shit. Is that real there's diamonds? Pe- holy there's shit. There's people. The best thing is, though, is at a wrestling show, there's going to be a couple of people you see wearing them proudly that night, and they do not look like the person that has 850 bucks to be spending on a replica heavyweight belt. <laughs> but fucking more power to them. You Dude, live that life. they have three pairs of headphones. I'd say there's a great there's a great chance, but they they purposely bought three. They didn't lose any at the yeah. Manhattan Brooklyn Bridge. I'm also thinking now, like you're gonna be like, yeah, I went to the Statue of Liberty. Later, finding out that it was like a hobo standing on like a uh, <laughs> on like a milk crate. <laughs> you're like, yeah. yeah, it wasn't as inspirational as I as I anticipated. He told me welcome. So, mm-hmm. well, I think he said well, come. Oh boy. Uh... Chinspan doesn't work, bro.